Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at some Carl Barks, Ed, and that makes it a very good day. Before we do, <laughs> let's contrast Carl Barks with the latest Red Room news. Let's say the connective tissue is Fantagraphics. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You can't disable the power of my label. Red Room Comics, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. This is the Red Room uh, Anti-Social Network trade paperback, 208-page book that collects first four, well, the complete four issues of, uh, hey kids, <laughs> <laughs> of uh, the, the, the Red Room Anti-Social Network season of comics, uh, plus 70 pages of additional material. Uh, off the bat, you see that there's a lot of extra artwork that I've drawn. I spent a big chunk of the summer uh, working on, you know, designing these extra elements and adding content to the books. You could see all this stuff there. Very nice table of contents. Since since uh, Hip Hop One, like I decided that my table of contents has to, like you have to you have to use every page for its maximum, dude. And and if you're dashing off your table of contents, it means you don't care. Uh, we're gonna do a bigger video of, about this. Uh, if you pre-ordered it from Fantagraphics, that's totally cool. Should get to you in enough time. Uh, for the holidays, if that's if that's an issue, far side Gary Larson uh, reference right there. That made my day. <laughs> um, get it at your local comic shop if they get it. But Amazon bought half the print run of this thing, man. So uh, get it uh, at Amazon if you're in a pinch and you need this thing quickly for the young psycho in your life, man. To stuff their stockings with. Not what I want to look at when you're saying in a pinch, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, coming coming out November 9th, man, collecting all these issues, plus 70 pages of additional stuff. Uh, you want to read ahead of time uh, to the next miniseries, Trigger Warning, then hit up my Patreon. All these links are in my link tree in the description below this video. And like I said, we'll do a big video really unpacking Damn. this thing. Yeah, what you think about that, Jimmy? I haven't seen that one before. It's the tension of the hook in the tongue <laughs> where you could tell that it's pulling. That really got me. <laughs> Looks great, Ed. Really impressive uh, productions. That's a beautiful book. Uh, subject matter notwithstanding. <laughs> uh, I'm showing off Plain Janes. Again, for, with the holiday season coming up, perfect for the young adult reader in your life about a group of high school students, who uh, high school artists, who decide they're bored with their suburban life and start making public art and create all kinds of co uh, problems in their little community. You can get this wherever you buy books and comics. You can order it online if you don't have a good comic book store out there. But perfect for the young adult reader in your life, kind of like my shoujo manga. You can also join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see original art from all of my comics. You can see scripts, process, sketches. See how I make the comics that I make, like The Plain Janes, Street Angel, Octobriana, and much more at patreon.com slash jimrug. But today, Ed, we're going to look at a Carl Barks classic from the Fantagraphics line of uh, Carl Barks reprints, which are absolutely stunning. Some Gorgeous. of the nicest done uh, reprints in comics. And uh, a great era whenever everybody started doing not just reprinting classic comics, but really putting in the effort to make them look good. This is top of the line stuff. Yeah, this ain't your, your Gladstone perfect bound gimmicks man that like you open up and and it comes the binding comes loose <laughs> no no definitely not these are amazing books and the story we're going to look at today is donald duck in the golden helmet considered one of bark's classic stories and uh man it is adventure at the highest level yeah i, I chose this one uh as our sort of maiden voyage because it's the great Bill Boy Shell from copacetic comics it's it's like it's one of his favorites and, and he has every coral bark's comic uh every duck comic man so he he is a he is a uh a good source of of that that info a barks guru that uh he shared that knowledge with quite a few people that have come through his, his comic shops over the years I'm i don't sure. i don't want this to be our last call no. barks and i have some ideas about what the next ones would be the 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 logical one is like lost in andes with the little square eggs and stuff but he was always like no man the golden helmet one of the great things with Barks is the sense of movement. Like characters are always kind of uh, alive and you see it as, as even a sleepy Donald Duck is walking, making his rounds through the museum where he's working as a guard. And I always love this old animation trick, right? Right foot up, left foot up, right foot up. You know, how, how you move from panel to panel in that kind of uh, process is something that I learned pretty early on in trying to make comics. The other thing that he does so well are just the directional devices. Like you, your eye flows through these pages really easily, whether it's a character moving in a certain direction or, you know, where the character's looking and shapes that are pointing to these uh, subsequent panels. And it's hard to imagine 
where bar you know if that's intuitive if that's something like how does barkson even know how to do that and this is probably the 40s i'm, I'm guessing yeah there, there's 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 so much to this stuff and and it's this real i mean there's a surreal quality you see it two times on on this spread man the race of men could ever sink so low a man who the blazes like he doesn't see these characters as like totally. ducks and 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 you could just imagine how cheesy it would be where it's like Oh, this really quacks me up and like you right. know, yes. bullshit like that. There's none of that kind of punnage or nonsense. Um, so quick plot stuff is this is an old Viking ship and that guy was snooping around, you know, kind of uh, on the exhibition where he shouldn't have been, which uh, makes Donald wonder what's going on. And he finds a map tucked into the uh, the old Viking ship, which sets the adventure off. Right. It's the, it's a map of the new world and uh, proof that this Viking explorer had gotten here way before anyone else had gotten to North America. Meanwhile, this guy is, that's exactly what he's looking for, right? I mean, this is, this is uh, Indiana Jones kind of stuff. You know, it's archaeology and history and adventure. It reminded me a lot of, um, like, Tintin Absolutely. reading this. Because, again, characters are moving about and very plot-driven. It's an adventure story. There are little running jokes that are built in here, too. Like, like these are... One of the things that makes Carl Barks amazing is he is a one man making this thing and it has all the richness and substance of uh, like a whole animated Walt Disney feature that would require a team of people, not just to animate it, but probably even to write the thing. And it's one guy consistently doing extremely rich, like, uh, you know, comics, stories, whatever. So one of the running jokes is the kind of um, fake Latin, you know, <laughs> flick is flack is yes. fud diddly um. And, and it's like, you know, which in legal language is blah, blah, blah. So like, and he'll explain like that it's legal language whenever he does this like hocus pocus locus, which means blah, blah, blah. Um, this kind of running joke, this kind of thing. Uh, you see examples of it in Robert Crumb. You see examples of it in, like, Jaime Hernandez. And, and by the way, the crumb probably coming right from Barks. Directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he was he was probably scooping this stuff up at, at, at the time. Ed, to your point about the fake Latin, the translation of this hocus locus jocus to the landlord belong the doorknobs. That's hysterical. <laughs> That's hysterical. He's so funny. Every Every word makes a lot of sense the lettering is beautiful like there's like a there's a swoop to the to all the characters that adds bounce and you just never see lettering like this closest i would say is like ec Seagar has has a kind of stroke like this but there's there's just an air about this lettering it's 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 really readable very like nice big font nice silhouettes and we'll see that kind of shape and uh the way he composes panels consistently from page to page. This one stood out to me because this is whenever he finds out, uh, you know, the bad news and he throws that red dot behind Donald's head. And man, I looked at that and looked at that when I was rereading it. It's such a cool panel and just such a random idea, you know, to throw that, that piece up there, but there's a gonna, really cool panel. There's going to be another really good one. Whenever we get uh, Huey, Dewey and Louie in the mix, man, I got him. Yeah, here it is right here. Where they, where they say something stupid. Like, uh, like, uh, we're going to Labrador. What's Labrador movie? And just boing, he just runs his head into a wall and then like, you keep going. And, and you see the adventure elements now, like they're on the road. We've got our setup of what's happening. Everybody's racing to try to get to this point of, uh, where the golden helmet is, which will make you the ruler of North America, the owner of North America, whoever comes up with that helmet. And then, uh, we're getting to the point, like if, if, if you had any question, especially seeing that Viking ship in about 16 different angles, this Carl Bar- Barks fella could draw. And by the way, you know, talking about the kind of directional devices that lead you through his comics, you know, you see all the ducks looking into this next panel. Very easy to follow along this stuff. And uh, one of the things, like, when you see Ninja Turtles and you see the multicolored bandanas, makes so much sense, right? <laughs> and, like, I know that these characters are drawn with these black shirts and they just have, like, a different colored striped hat. Uh, but man, after you like grow up with DuckTales and you see the characters, it makes it just makes so much sense that they have multicolor shirts. And it's interesting that like with all of his acumen and intellect, like that just didn't come to mind. It is surprising because when you're rattling off all of his strengths, 
I thought you were going to say like character design and stuff because, you know, there's such a range of characters, many of which he's inventing for one story. And then, yeah. you know, the, the next story, it'll be different characters. It's commendable. Like he yeah. really is, uh, you know, if we had our, our trading cards of cartoonists, he would have high marks in several categories. I mean, let's take a look at just this spread right here, man. Raging Rapids. Yeah, the Crazy high seas. Ways. I love the uh, the water, the way the water is depicted. It, it almost feels sculptural as it's like going up and down. Again, with the motion. You know, like this is, there's no static water on these pages. Not at all, man. And he's he's bending these panels when you get something like that. Like this, these are these are strokes that Harvey Kurtzman would employ like in the in the war books. And there's just like this, this beautiful... This is comics, man. You could have some fun. So we see Donald Duck in his seaman hat right here. But then <laughs> we don't have to see him put on the gimmick. And it's kind of funnier for that. Very much so. That's one of my favorite parts of comics is that you can just have that have that element enter in. You know, at this point, the uh, our bad guys out in front has a lead in his boat with uh, Donald, Donald in hot pursuit following behind him. And, you know, these high seas are dangerous. One of the first times I, Carl Barks got on my radar, I think it was a Comic Scene magazine article, you know, about his great Duck comics. And they would talk about National Geographic magazine being a, a big uh, part of his morgue file. How and it, it was be? for this kind of stuff, yeah. you know, like show us rocky coasts and, and icebergs and high seas. And it really is that adventure thing that these comics were bringing to a reader in the 40s when it's like, I was nobody's gone here that's reading this comic in the 1940s. But you are in the imagination. Let's just talk storytelling, man. You got, and the, the color helps sell it, man. You got two separate, like, geological structures right here. Two big rock formations, man. Separated with, like, an orange and a purple. Got the green boat in between. And then, so it's established in this panel. Several panels later, now the boat is stuck. First off, that's not easy to draw. Uh, second off, setting it up with storytelling in mind. Uh, could be so clunky. Like a Marvel version of that, you would have no question about what's about to happen or something. This is There's subtlety here. Yeah, no wasted panels. Mm -hmm. This is not decompressed storytelling. No. Almost every panel, two things are happening. You know, whether it's dialogue driven and then the action is something else, but it's like there is no waste uh, in, in these comics. It's I, moving. I also think that part of the bounciness is the choice. Like he thinks about the movement and keeping the page interesting. Uh, he, he could easily have made these gridded, gridded comics where yes. just the gutter is running completely down, but he made the clear decision not to do that. In fact, in fact, I don't think any panel shape is the same size. So like, I don't think this corresponds exactly with this no, bottom right. one. It does not. So every panel is a different shape, even though the tiers mm -hmm. size, the height of and each one. Here Super you see his uh, his drawing invention, right? Like, how do you draw fog? Yeah. You know, it's one more it's one more visual interesting piece. Yeah, he he is doing overtime for uh, how much he's putting on these pages. Great weight and body language. Some of the stuff that really reminds me of Tintin Absolutely. walking around. Yeah, yeah, like like Erzy would would be able to. This is the that. museum director, you know, yet a third party that's that's trying to uh, get to that golden helmet ahead of everybody. Yeah, there's no mistaking that this is not a good guy, <laughs> right? You know, like from the from the first moment you see him, great salesmanship with uh, the canoe work right there. Yeah, Excellent very acting. believable weight. Again, a silhouette this time used for a nighttime scene. Makes perfect sense. And you, there's your National Geographic panel, right? You take this, you put it, this in black and white. Don't let me see that lettering, man. I'm thinking I'm looking at a Prince Valiant panel. It's that yeah, good. good call. It's that, it's that elegant, that lush. It's manga, because it's like you got your, your little cartoony characters with these like pretty realistic, believable kind of backgrounds. That's a good call, too. Um, I'll add to that that we've seen now like three or four organic structures, the icebergs, the rocky cliff, the, the rock in the foreground here that's coming out. Each one of them is treated differently, drawn differently. There's there's depth of field in black line where we, we're seeing a lot of contrast with, with black shadow, water hitting this. And then like look at just a sparse line of this rock structure back there. Like not, talk about no wasted uh, panels, no wasted inclines, never more than you need. 
how much does even little detail like having a couple of these dashed off lines for seagulls in the background add to it? Absolutely. Really giving you that sense that, that they're out there and that life is ha like there's more going on beyond the edges of these panel borders. <laughs> and, you know, always a chance for comedy, right? The, the, the bird dropping eggs on Donald's head. <laughs> just, just uh, <laughs> you know, designing cool little, you know, like, like these are men, but that's an animal. Right. Yes. You know, it's like it has it's its own logic. And uh, hey, we're looking through binoculars in this panel again. Okay. Just just keeping up. Like, what do you do? Visually interesting. You know, don't repeat panels. Keep trying to make make it uh, something to look at. This joke is funny, Ben. Uh, he's wearing a golden helmet already. <laughs> <laughs> that helmet's badass, by the way. <clears throat> That's like Frank Frazetta. It is that 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 cover of that <laughs> totally. One. I know exactly the one. <laughs> Yeah, and you're right about your bad guy is such a bad guy. You know, even a long distance gestural image of him, you can kind of see his menace and, and, you know, he's frantic and what he wants, he expects. And whenever he gets it, he looks smug. It's a lot of drawing. And now, like, what is the trope we're playing with here, man? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, something like that. Like, it's a monkey paw. It's Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord of the Rings, of course. Yeah, because each person who gets hold of this goes from with the exception of our first guy, uh, noble intentions. Right. But once they actually get hold of this and start thinking about it, man, it's, it's hard to dump that into the sea and, and, uh, you know, not take advantage of it. There's a Mandela effect thing that happens because like, uh, you know, way back in the day when this book came out, you know, this is, I, this is the first Fantagraphics book of, of, of this line. Right. So this came out years ago and, uh, you know, I've read this story several times, um, in my mind's eye, the helmet gets recovered way earlier and it passes through more hands and we see more examples of the corruption taking place. That's funny. But we only have about, we have less than 10 pages to go and it's all you need, man. It creates the impression, like by passing it through like two or three hands, it creates, like it's so clear. It could have been overdone. You know what's funny? I didn't think about like three act structure with reading this but I i'm wondering like how well this graphs on like here we are at the end of act two and we've got the helmet right so what is act three it is that helmet being passed around and still trying to resolve it you think we've gotten what we came for we got the helmet that's what you know has been established in the beginning as our goal but it isn't now the stakes have changed because suddenly everybody's being succumbing to the allure of this helmet and it was established in act one that uh, Donald, if you find that helmet, you got to just chuck that into the sea. Like nobody should have this thing. So, Always so we, the plan. Yeah. So, so we had that in the back of our mind the entire time, and now we're seeing that play out. Barks does a great job in terms of escalating the stakes too, because you know we go the bad guy gets it first. Of course, that's the worst case scenario. We get it out of his hands. Now the the museum director, who seems to be a good guy, but we don't know him that well, he's the next guy to get it right. And of course, after him, now we're getting it into our hero's hands. So once Donald gets it, well, he's the guy we know and trust, right? Of course not. <laughs> you know, it's just upping that ante as, as uh, the corruption spreads into the better into, into these good characters that. You know, he's our protagonist. How can he fall for it? That's such a good image right there. <laughs> amazing. All of this, man, think, the thinking, like this is the classic Donald we all know from the cartoons who was like the, the almost villain with the Mickey Mouse. How great are these two where he's winding up to throw it out to sea and then having second thoughts? And it's, it's total like stagey like WrestleMania pantomime, like whenever it's like, you know, should I give him one in the kisser? And he's like looking out at the crowd. Yeah. You're not getting better body language than these two. Yeah. Yep. And Donald falls for it, even to the point of leaving his nephew stranded on an iceberg. <laughs> but they took his compass. And the, and the, all the and this shit is established earlier on. Like the the nephews are like, hey, how do you we know where we're going? Well, I have this compass and I have that little uh, camera thing. You're right. Uh, so Chekhov's like, compass. Yeah. So so that stuff is established earlier. Yeah, really for, well for, done. Like later payoff. This is very rich writing. Even the part of like you know you're abandoning your nephews on this iceberg. Aren't they going to die and starve to death? Nope. We even see like the beans being unloaded. You know so. Probably not the best thing to do, abandon your nephews on the iceberg, but it gives them provisions. I, I, I have read about uh, like Inuit culture uh, from back in the, in the day, and uh, 
infanticide was uh, chosen more than whatever it is when you kill a grandpa. Because like, like the old people are the wisdom or, or the knowledge and can pass down the information. The hope is you put the little kid on an iceberg or something, you put him out there. The hope is that somebody else just finds him and can give him some whale blubber to eat not, or something. Not a, not a polar bear. Right. Which is uh, the hope when you're reading a Donald Duck Carl Barks comic. <laughs> Gotta have something come in. <laughs> yeah, man. Establish a part like they got, they still have like little axes. Maybe they can uh, weave this iceberg into a shape to make something happen. <laughs> and the polar bear chases them up, up their little, fl- uh, I don't know, cell pool. I don't know what, what you call that. Listen, man, we're land lovers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it does result in. Uh, Pausing the story long enough for our mystery ship to show up. The mystery ship, the iceberg, that yeah. the resourceful nephews have, have constructed here to catch up to their uh, corrupted uncle who needs their help. Just n- more great, you know, comic book childlike uh, <laughs> imagery, man. Just, you know, f- fashioning a, a, a boat out of, out of ice in, in two hot seconds. That feels like such a fun kid gimmick. You know, like you have young readers, like that feels like a really fun one to come All up with. All of this, yeah. Or, or out of a cartoon, as you say earlier, would have been a perfect fit. It is, I wonder how many of these things were eventually adapted into cartoons, because it does feel like you've got everything you need here. You know, you could kind of like pick and choose a du- little bit to, duct- to edit it into cartoon Duck shape. Tales is in the title, man. Like a whole series that influenced, you know, my entire generation. And then they keep they keep up with their Latin gimmick, and now it's passing from character to character. <laughs> yeah. Donald's saying, Nicus nocus nopus, meaning I don't want to. <laughs> And finally, uh, our evil lawyer, Sharky, gets the helmet briefly, and uh, the nephews throw a couple of fish his direction and free free everybody of this helmet. But not before Huey, Dewey, or Louie. Uh, is lamenting that the, the helmet is lost. So so he even got seduced yeah, a touch. A little gleam in his eye. But sp- speaking of your Lord of the Rings, man, this is, you know, tossing that shit into the volcano. Absolutely. Um, and we're back in the museum where we started. And Donald is comfortable in his position, so there's an arc here. Like, he's he's uh, starts off the thing, laissez-faire, bored, not happy with his station in life. Good point. At the end of the story, the arc has changed. Uh, his character has developed. And now, you know what? After all those adventures and maybe, you know, committing some crimes against his young nephews and stuff, he's going to settle in and be comfortable with his position. That is a great detail. You know, for all the writing that we're highlighting, I mean, it really does come full circle. It's it's a, a mini epic here, but attention to detail. Going back to the very beginning and seeing Donald in that state, Paying attention to that arc, um, there's a reason Carl Barks is celebrated, yeah, and it is sure. in that kind of detail work. But uh, contrast Donald from beginning to end, and I think you end up with an extremely satisfying story. Fascinating to think these were really comics aimed at young readers that, again, persevere. I mean, you know, what are we looking at here? A 70 year old comic that probably better than most of the comics I read this week. I got I got more out of this comic than I got out of like uh say the past dozen comics I read, <laughs> man. I and this will not be the last Coral Borks on the channel, man, but let's get out of here and go read some more. Uh K favors like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell when we'll notify you new vids are available. It's out there. Join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rug where you can download out of print zines and mini comics. You can see my original art, process, sketches, scripts, how I make the comics I make, like the Plain Janes, Street Angel, Octobriana, and more at patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Red Room Comics in the Wild, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit, the trade paperback, the anti-social network coming out November 9th. Uh, get it at your local comic shop. If you pre-ordered from Fantagraphics, it, sh- it should get to you before the uh, hol- before uh, Christmas. And if not, you've seen this video afterward, you don't have a good comic shop in town, uh, scoop this comic up off of Amazon because they bought half our print run and we need to make those things disappear. <laughs> You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Given those margin orders, will be on our way. Read more comics.